Hey, man, right? I love you, man. All right, Mike. How are hey, you? Hey, man. How you doing? Are you going to piss anyone off today? No, you know, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, actually. So uh, we're going to talk about Bitcoin use cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, um, you know, we, we called this, right? Like, uh, I didn't choose this title, by the way. So I just want, I want to say something. Obviously, number go up is a good thing, right? Like, we believe that Bitcoin's a store of value. We want, like, we want this to be a way that people can save money and build wealth. So I want to, want to be very clear. So um, I think what we mean when we say number go up is not a use case. I think we mean something very subtle. I think it's really about like what all of you need to be focusing on right now, right? You know, obviously number hasn't been going up lately, but that's like really like th that's like this is like the best time, right? Like to be building, to be really thinking about like what's important to advance this conversation we're having around decentralized money, um, internet native money, um, and I think everyone here we all we all think this is like really really important for the world for many reasons, right? We see. Um, fun, like fundamentally, we see so much crazy shit happening in the world right now. Uh, there's concerns about the stability of the financial system. There's concerns um, about you know authoritarian governments all across the world that are literally weaponizing money and banking um, against people, um, and it's it's incredible. And you know, my good friend Alex Gladstein, you know, he's always he's always out there talking about this and. Um, it, and, you know, he, he, he more, you know, I want to say this about Alex too, like, you know, he more than anyone uh, invigorates me and makes me like show up to work every day and realize like how important it is to be, um, to be like doing what we're doing. Um, but we have a lot of work ahead, right? It's early. It, it is early in this, in this conversation, uh, in, in this technology. But if we think in terms of cycles, um, sometimes parts of those cycles, we get very excited with the price going up. And we get a little bit depressed when the price goes down. But actually, that sometimes masks some of the good work and some of the innovation. Yeah. I mean, if you think in the last four years, what kind of innovation has been exciting you? Yeah, well, so, you know, it, the, the thing that, that really excites me, and I actually think the best thing that's come out of this, this bear market, um, if, if, you know, if we're going to call it that, is we finally have seen, like, the emergence of decentralization technologies that doesn't involve stuffing shit onto the blockchain, right? Like we see no stir, you know, blue sky, you know, we, we, we announced our, our web five developer kit today. I mean, these are technologies that like we need, like we need to have like true decentralized open protocols, open source that actually make sense, right? It doesn't make sense to tokenize the whole internet, right? Like I think, I, I think it was like Matt Corallo who like said at one point that like, you know, like, Bit like blockchain is like the shittiest database that you could possibly um, invent. Um, but it, it, it's, it's, it's what like secures this, like, this, this beautiful thing that we're here, all here celebrating and talking about. Um, but it's not for everything. It's not for every single use case. We need, we need to build other uh, decentralization tech. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, Bitcoin is, is an amazing base layer uh, to, build, to build, I think, a new system of trust in a world that seems to have very little trust, low trust in institutions. You know, we have low social trust. There's increasing polarization in the world. And I think, you know, we need to, like, really get back to basics and try to find a way to have some sort of common epistemology. You know, like, B Bitcoin's at least that at, like, a, at some level. But, like, you know, we, we need to do it in a lot more places. You know, identity is the place that we're really focusing on. We think um, having true self-sovereign identity um, in the world is a really, really important goal. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, people, you know, I, I would say like in the same way that I think Bitcoin um, is so important in the global south today um, and in places where there's, there's uh, you know, like human, right, like human rights abuses and, 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 and uh, political activism that's fighting for freedom and democracy around the world. Um, and we see all those great use cases that, that Alex, I said, you know, and the Human Rights Foundation um, guys are, are constantly uh, trumpeting. Um, we also have a big problem in the world. We have like, we have several billion people, more than a billion people in the world who have no government issued identity. Um, and you know, we may not like government issued identity. Uh, we obviously, that's why we want self-sovereign identity. Um, but imagine how hard it is to 
uh, live in the modern world without paperwork proving that like you're a person, right? And, and there's millions and millions of people who are born into that situation in the world and they're at a crazy disadvantage. And it's amazing, you know, to have something like Bitcoin, right, that can reach those people and they don't have to ask any permission, they don't have to do any KYC and they can gain access to the financial system. But there's a whole other world of things that something like digital identity um, uh, can provide access to, like even above and beyond uh, Bitcoin, like secure communication, for example. I think which is really, which is really important, um, like, I think, by the way, you know, with the rise of AI and the risk of, of deep fakes and, and, and AI-driven and AI driven cyber attacks, the, it's going to be increasingly important to have decentralized trust um, on the internet that we can use uh, to verify that we are who we say we are. We, we're not going to be able to trust like a, a you know, a, a Google Hangout or a FaceTime video in five years. It's, it's like, it, how, how, am I, how do I not know that that's not a deep fake conversation? We're going to need some other trust layer um, that allows us to um, like see through whatever it is we're looking at on the screen and knowing that we have some sort of common foundation of trust and that I'm actually talking to you. And, and so I feel like we're in a race against time now with, with these threats emerging. Um, and that just adds to all the other things that we think about um, that we want these technologies to address. And so building utility, you know, leveraging the amazing potential of the Bitcoin blockchain, which we're using, right? We know we're using ION, you know, for, uh, you know, for, for issuing our DID, so we're securing digital identity with the Bitcoin blockchain. I think that's an incredible use case. That means, you know, if, you know, we get, we get millions and millions of people around the world, billions of people securing their digital identity with Bitcoin. I mean, that's going to make number go up. I mean, that's driving real utility um, on the Bitcoin blockchain. So um, we're really excited to be rolling out these technologies and pushing it forward. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's kind of like my big message to everyone. So if Web3 is... <laughs> so if Web3 is bullshit, what is Web5? Well, I mean, like, so, I mean, it, it, was, it, it was obviously meant as a joke, right, to make fun of, of Web3, right? Um, I, we, we were at an offsite, um, you know, a, year, a little over a year ago, and, you know, there was just a group of us, and, and we were, I mean, we were, we, were, we were making fun of Web3, right? We, we, were, we were, like, making fun of the fact that, you know, all these ridiculous uh, efforts to try and stuff data into all these blockchains, um, we, like, obviously it was all going to blow up, and it did. Um, and we were sitting there thinking about, like, you know, how, how, what, like, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of interest in having decentralized tech and freedom tech on the internet to build decentralized applications like decentralized identity, like the decentralized off-ramping and on-ramping that we're trying to do with TV decks. And we asked ourselves, we said, like, well, like, like what could we do? Like, what, what kind of technologies could we cobble together um, and, and what kind of, and what, and, what, and then what could we call it? What, what, what thing could we call that to sort of uh, draw attention to the fact that like, you don't have to stuff everything onto a, a, a blockchain and, and issue tokens to, to decentralize things. Um, and so we just all got talking, you know, I, I, I think Web4 might have even been the original idea. And then um, I think it was like a, a, a reference to the, you know, it, you know the, the, there's a scene and there's something about Mary where they're in the car and they're talking about like eight minute abs or, or something like that. And, um, and I think there was, there was, a, there was a joke uh, that came across and Web5 came up and it just, it just seemed so funny and, and, and ridiculous. And so we went with it. And so here we are. And um, so that, that's, that's where it kind of came from. All right. So if we want to discuss the idea of use cases with Bitcoin, increasing Bitcoin's utility, we've had this emergence of ordinals on Bitcoin. Yeah. We just split the crowd. Yeah. Some people don't like it. Some people like it. Yeah. Some people don't give a shit. Um, where do you sit on this? Because yeah. it's an interesting topic. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm with like, I'm with the, well, so I'm of two minds of it. Like on one mind, like the Bitcoin network's working the way it should, right? Like, you know, you know, blo like blockchain, you know, block space is a, is a commodity, right? And um, we have to, you know, we have to accept that and, and, and it's priced and, and, and it's scarce. Um, so it's working the way it should. Uh, you know, on the other hand, you know, person, I'm, you know, I'm speaking for myself and I don't want to offend anyone. I'm not, I'm not really... Like, I'm not really taken by any of the use cases for these things um, so far. Like, I don't really buy into the whole um, NFT on Bitcoin or on, or on any other network. Makes no sense to me. But 
Um, it, look, I, I'm open to being proving wrong, proven wrong. If, if uh, several years from now it turns out that, they're, that, that things like that are useful, I'll, I'll change my mind. But right now I'm pretty skeptical of, of the use cases. But, um, but look, the, the, the network's working as it should. So where do you think focus is required? We have Bitcoin, so we have decentralized money. We have Nostar now, so we have decentralized communications yeah. and kind of some form of identity there. Yeah. What are the other big trends you think are coming or things you think we should be working on? That's a good question. I mean, well, you know, I, 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 and this is, this is kind of, I guess, going a little bit uh, off topic. I, I, do, I, do th I do think we, uh, you know, we do need to be thinking about artificial intelligence now, like in a, I think, like, like really, I mean, uh, in how we're going to defend against it. I, you know, I, I mentioned, I think, I, I, I think that, um, you know, Bitcoin, decentralized identity, you know, decentralized social networking um, are really important tools uh, to, to, to potentially uh, mitigating some of the, the dangers of AI, um, but it's probably not enough. We probably, there's, there, there needs to be a lot more thought given to, to how, we're, how we're thinking about that. I, I mean, I think, I think there's, there's novel risks that we don't even understand yet. Um, so that's, like, that's probably the thing that's like most on my mind outside of this, this stuff day to day. What are the risks that you're concerned about? Because AI is super interesting, and I I'm, I'm using it now. We use it now yeah. on a nearly daily basis. Yeah. It has a real benefit to making us pro more productive. Um, and kind of half the conversation is about the future use cases of AI, and then the other half is how it's going to kill us all. <laughs> well, you know, it, I, you know I, 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 I have to be nuanced here, right? Like, I, I don't think that we're, I, I don't like, think that we should be like, in a full-fledged panic, right? Um, but I do think it's a, we're at an interesting inflection point in the history of human technology. I mean, we've never had a technology like this before, right? Um, uh, a technology that can think for itself, that can make its own decisions, that can potentially manipulate people, uh, trick people into, into thinking it's, it's someone when it's actually just a, a, an AI model. Um, it's, not, it's not really a dynamic we've ever had to contend with. Um, in, in the history of humanity. So it, it's hard to know what the, what the social and technological effects of that are. So, you know, I, I, I like to use the word worry, um, not panic, you know. Uh, you know, we, sh we shouldn't be freaking out about it, but like, I think everyone, sh everyone, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you're a, like a Bitcoiner or you're a, uh, you know, or, you know, you're a, a shitcoiner or whatever. Like, I mean, everyone should be like, should be worried about it at some level that, that you know, we're building a technology that we fundamentally do not understand what the potential consequences of it are. Um, and so I definitely think that um, people should be paying attention, people should be worried. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think we can ban it. Like, I don't think we can like, expect to put Pandora back in its box. But I hope you know, that, that technologists and uh, companies, open source developers are all sort of thinking about the things that are going to be important to, to fight back against the, the biggest risks that might be emerging there. All right. So if people are sat here listening and they're thinking, OK, Mike, I agree. We've got a lot of work to do, got a lot of stuff to build. You know, this, we're, we're in the middle of a fight right now, a regulatory yeah. fight, a FUD fight. What are the things that people could do? What would you advise people? What would I, in, in the context of like the regulatory pressures if, that we're in? No, in the fact that we have stuff to build. Anyone here is thinking, how can I, how can I help? A lot of people often write to me, it's like, I want to get involved, what can I do? Yeah, I mean, well, well we're hiring, uh, TBD is hiring, so uh, you know, that's one thing you can do if, if, you're, if you're interested in any of the stuff that we're working on. Uh, definitely reach out. We have recruiters on the ground here, so um, definitely uh, there's that. Um, and also, there's there's uh, there's so many other great projects here. Um, you know, contribute to open source projects. I mean, open source is, you know, ultimately to me um, how we're going to guarantee a positive future for the internet and technology. And so, uh, it, you know, not everyone's a developer, but you know, with with. Chat GPT and some of this generative AI, it, it, um, it, it's, it's increasingly seeming that you can uh, actually learn to code uh, quite quickly with the help of some of these uh, chat. So that's one good use for AI. It can get you bootstrapped into contributing to open source code uh, faster. That's probably my, my, my biggest one that comes to mind. Um, you know, obviously call your congressmen and senators, uh, 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 you know, if, uh, to, to, to support uh, non insane regulation here in the United States. And, um, and members of parliament in, in different countries around the world. Uh, but like, yeah, like, I mean, uh, they, you know, obviously uh, there's, there's the, uh, I guess 
I guess this is the, the thing I was pushing back against a little bit, but no, I mean, you, know, can, you can also stay humble and stack sats, um, support the network, uh, you know, continue to, to, to help uh, to build this movement that we're, that, we're all, that we're all building together towards a more positive future for, for humanity. I mean, we've definitely had regulatory pressure over the last year. Yeah. It's getting more significant. There's a significant operation choke point, 2.0 working against us. Do you think we should be directly putting a lot of effort into engaging with senators and politicians? Because some people think we should yeah. just ignore them and get on with build. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, look, I mean, uh, look, uh, I'm, I'm not, look, uh, whatever, whatever way, uh, you know, people want to want to try and contribute to this message. I'm, I'm you know, if people want to go the sort of like, you know, screw the screw the government, screw the regulators approach and just keep building and, 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 and operate outside the system, like all the power to you. You know, for my for my part, you know, I think that, you know, it, it is really important. Um, the government's there. The regulators are there. Um, you know, the on ramps and off ramps are really important to the Bitcoin network today um, to being able to get people to be able to get access to it, you know, easily. Liquidity is important. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I definitely think that engagement, educating lawmakers, um, killing this 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 fud that's happening around like Bitcoin and climate change, uh, you know th 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 these 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 things these things are things that we should be engaging on. Um, we should be trying to mitigate the risks there, even as we continue to build. Um, you know, I'm doing that. You know, uh, lots of people are doing that, and I think I think that is important work. Uh, yeah, like I mean, electing politicians that are pro Bitcoin, that are pro decentralized technology, pro pro freedom tech. Um, you know, it would would go. I think would go a long way to like changing the message. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I, think, I think we have to engage. And Mike, you and I are Bitcoiners. Yeah. We're in a room full of Bitcoiners talking, yeah. talking, about, talking about Bitcoin. So there's a lot of Bitcoiners talking to Bitcoiners about Bitcoin. But I think there's now a pressing need to push outside of those communities and try and get out to other people. But sometimes getting the Bitcoin message across is tough. It doesn't always resonate with people. And I've noticed a shift to people talking about freedom tech and yeah. decentralized tech. How do you think we break that kind of layer of, into that layer of people who just see Bitcoin as this weird thing and us as a bunch of weirdos? Yeah, well, well, I, I don't believe I, I actually I, I do like talking about decentralization tech and freedom tech um, and, and, and talking about how Bitcoin can be part of that ecosystem, because like we see it happening on Noster with Zaps, right? Like that's that's like feeding utility into the Bitcoin network. You know, we're securing digital identity with Bitcoin. So all these decentralized tech, you know, works together with Bitcoin and improves Bitcoin. So, I mean, I do think broadening the ten and thinking about like different protocols and, and, and different technological, um, you know, inventions that we need to make to, to, to drive towards that, that more positive future for humanity is a really good thing. And I do think that's a good frame. And I think it's good for Bitcoin. And, and we should and we should be broadening out like that. Um, I don't think it's the detriment of Bitcoin at all that people are talking more about freedom tech and decentralization tech. Um, I think we should be embracing that. And and, uh, and you know I see some of that happening here. I mean I think that's what what Noster and Web Five are. And um, and I think we should continue to to, to to push that message. All right, we've got a minute to go. We've got a big year ahead of us. Talk to me about the things that you are most excited about over the next year. That you think people should be keeping an eye on. We're, I mean, we're really excited about the launches that we're going to make this year. Uh, you know, we have some big announcements coming up in, in, in the summer, um, you know, on, on, on the Web5 stuff. Uh, we, we do plan on, on launching our TBDEX network by the end of this year, which, just to remind everyone, is like decentralized global on-ramps and off-ramps uh, for Bitcoin and yes, stablecoin, huge, huge demand um, in the global south for access to um, to uh, tokenize dollars as well, but you know those two fundamental technologies, you know, and getting people access to it like anywhere in the world and easy access that can um, that can ultimately um, like plug into uh, local banking systems around the world, so people can use this to move you know for everything from remittance use cases to saving. Um, this is this is something that that we're going to launch this year. I'm super excited about it, and hopefully I'll be back here next year. Um, celebrating those wins. Great, I look forward to it. Big shout out, big thanks to Mike. Thank you.
Bitcoiners, welcome back to the Bitcoin Magazine Live Desk brought to you by Marathon. I'm CK. I'm sitting with my esteemed panelists and today we are going to be talking a little bit more about Web5 here. We have one of the only people who's actually deployed this tech stack into a real business. Justin, talk to us about what is happening with Web5 and why is Zion built on this? I think the biggest recap is identity messaging and payments and decentralizing the entire part of the stack. And what's really interesting about what Mike is telling you is that these are not theoretical things. These are apps that you can go, to, Zion's available on every app store. You can start a DID using DidION immediately, have a Bitcoin Lightning wallet immediately within seconds, and then message across using DWNs in seconds. This is not theoretical technology just because it was launched today. It is working and Bitcoiners can use it every single day quickly to deploy all the things that, you, that he was just talking about. I wish we had some more time to get more into it, but really innovative and awesome tech coming bam, out bam, of bam, 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 TBD. Bam, bam, and y'all, I have to encourage everyone, check out the newest Bitcoin magazine. This thing is an absolute beauty. You can get your subscription online or over at the conference store. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down. But Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee, a city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th. 